All right, welcome everyone. Today, today we're going to talk about Azure Stream Analytics, which is uh, one of Microsoft's uh, latest addition as a platform as a service. Uh, we're going to dive into why it's important, uh, when to use it, and uh, all the uh, fun things about how, how it works. Um, just to start off this presentation, uh, to give a brief introduction to Excella, uh, which is the technology firm that I currently work for. Uh, Excella is a uh, it's an agile firm based in the DC area um, with a floor of federal and uh, private uh, clients. Uh, we strive to leave our clients uh, transformed, meaning that uh, we not only uh, try to bring them great solutions that test them, but also uh, make the organization more efficient and more agile as far as possible. A little bit about, about myself. Uh, I currently work as a senior consultant here at Xala. Uh, I have uh, quite a few years of experience from uh, both uh, web development as well as, uh, as uh, data and analytics. I uh, have a keen interest and really like um, doing work with analytics, uh, something I've done previously in my career at uh, other industries, uh, such as G Healthcare and Thermos Fisher and Scientific. Um, I joined Excella about a year ago now, and uh, currently work for one of our uh, nonprofit clients in the DC area. All right, so let's get into it. So, um, gonna give you a brief introduction here on why uh, this presentation is worth uh, viewing, and a few reasons for you to stay awake. Um, so obviously today we're going to talk about Azure Stream Analytics. Um, but Azure Stream Analytics, as we will see later in this webinar, um, does not uh, live by itself. It resides within a larger ecosystem. Um, and the ecosystem uh, consists of Azure Events Hubs uh, as an ingress, as well as Azure Functions uh, as an uh, egress, so an output, um, as well as uh, uh, utilization of uh, web jobs. And some of you may think that web jobs is outdated uh, and should have been replaced by Azure Functions. Um, in many cases, you are right in that assessment, uh, but it actually is very useful when you're streaming live data from various data sources. Uh, we may also, if we have time, touch on uh, ARM templates, uh, which for those who are not familiar with this yet, uh, a way that Microsoft has uh, uh, been able to automate the uh, deployment of their cloud services using uh, uh, infrastructure as code. We're also going to uh, briefly look at uh, Azure Cognitive Services, uh, as well as uh, Twitter Streaming API. So um, this presentation and this webinar will uh, more or less be laid out in, in two, uh, two sections. Uh, firstly, we will uh, look into the theory behind Azure Stream Analytics uh, and what you can do and how it works. And then we'll uh, quickly jump into a demo where we will uh, be looking at a real application streaming uh, Twitter feeds and doing semantic analysis uh, on this theme. Uh, this is a really cool uh, use case of Azure Stream Analytics, and it's uh, really fascinating to me to see how fast you can get up and running and get real insights on a moving data stream. All right, so let's start off uh, with the basics here. What is stream processing? So if you think about it a bit, stream processing of real-time data is really all around you. You will see it in everyday life. Um, primarily, I think you may have noticed it uh, on your bank credit and debit card. Uh, it's uh, heavily used by banks to counter bank fraud um, in a sense that they, in a real-time fashion, stream transactions and take intel make intelligent actions uh, based on fraudulent uh, uh, data. Um, other good use cases of this as well um, that you've heard a lot about in the news lately is autonomous cars, so self-driving cars. All of those things cannot happen without uh, intelligent and smart analysis of real-time data streams. Um, it's just not enough to, to uh, stop a car because an object is in front of you. You also need to know uh, if the object is moving, what's the weather conditions, um, how the tire looking, uh, all kind of uh, different input streams. To join all those streams of data together uh, and perform some kind of a smart analysis on it, you can then make a good judgment call on whether it's safe to continue, slow down, turn, or just break. Other good use cases of this um, is uh, um, also in your daily commute. 
a lot of the toll roads uh, and such are and such are uh, are monitored uh, using real time data. Um, it can be used for uh, traffic information in your weather report in the morning, uh, but it can also be used to automatically um, charge you for the tolls you're using on your way to work. Um, and an area that I find very interesting, uh, as I have a, a large background in the medical device industry, is uh, industrial automation. A lot of uh, uh, sensors uh, in the factories uh, where you produce pharma and other, other medical devices uh, rely heavily on real-time data streaming in order to monitor and control their processes. Um, things like uh, Producing uh, protein from a pharma, for example, uh, requires that the pressure in certain parts of the system is uh, controlled um, or the flow of media is controlled. If any of those spike by any reason, uh, definitely needs to uh, trigger an alarm and also needs to trigger downstream effects, uh, which can easily be handled with Azure Stream Analytics. So if we dive into this uh, one level more, uh, we can look at uh, what a stream really is. So stream processing really consists of three main pillars. Ingestion, uh, processing uh, analytical data, as well as uh, the output. So with ingestion, uh, what I mean here and what I refer to is uh, in which way and how are we able to ingest various data streams such as temperature, uh, distance to the nearest object, uh, or in our case, that we'll see later, Twitter feeds. The processing part uh, is the core part of Azure Stream Analytics. Uh, as we'll see later, this is handled using a T-SQL uh, variant uh, that is called Azure Stream Analytics SQL. Output uh, is our sync, so that's uh, what kind of actions can we possibly take based on the analytical result. And as we'll see later, uh, we can do quite a few things. Uh, for, the remainder of, for the remainder of this presentation, please keep in mind that a stream, uh, when we talk about it, uh, in general consists of these things. The main part is that it's small. It's kilobyte size. Uh, it, in essence, has a timestamp and a value, and it's always continuous, and it can be from multiple sources. So let's look at some, uh, some basic concept here. An important distinction that we need to make uh, is between batch and stream processing. Uh, this presentation focuses primarily on stream processing, uh, but not to say that batch processing is not important as well. It's just a different concept. You may be a lot more familiar with batch processing, as batch processing is what we generally do when we try to create financial report or other reports that give us an uh, indication of uh, state in time uh, data. So batch processing uh, is generally performed on large volumes of data. The query uh, is done on the entire data set, so multiple tables uh, in general, and on all the content of tables. Uh, the query latency, um, depending on the size of your query, it can take anything from seconds to hours, uh, sometimes even days, uh, although that's obviously not recommended. Uh, and the data insight, uh, is mostly hourly to daily, and in some cases uh, on a monthly basis. Stream processing, on the other hand, uh, is done on small volumes. So remember, kilobyte size. It's done on a subset of data, and it's done with very, very low latency. So in order to, uh, to allow this real-time insight, we need to do, go down to milliseconds to seconds. And this provides us a great tool to get real-time insights um, into moving data. So what kind of technologies do we have on the market today, uh, especially now if you focus on the Azure platform that can do this? So I won't go into too much in depth on these technologies, but I want to outline which possibilities we have um, in Azure to do this. We're obviously going to talk about Azure Stream Analytics today, which is the, the main uh, platform as a service uh, offering from uh, Microsoft and Azure. But there are plenty of others, such as HD Insight with Stream Spark, uh, Spark Streaming, as well as Apache Spark in Azure Databricks, and HD Insight with Storm. Um, there are a few uh, considerations that need to be made when you choose uh, which uh, platform to go with. 
Um, I like to think about the loss uh, about the learning curve. Uh, so how long will it take for your organization uh, to get up to speed with one of these technologies? Um, one of the key distinguishers here is obviously how do you program um, this analytical engine? H Insight, uh, you can easily use Scala there or Java. So if you have an organization that is primarily focused on Scala and Java, uh, that may be a great option for you. Um, but Azure Stream Analytics does not use Scala or Java or C Sharp. It uses its own uh, variant of T-SQL. And it can also use JavaScript to create uh, user-defined functions, which I think uh, is really cool and interesting. Um, also note that um, we have Azure Functions and Azure Web Jobs as part of this slide. Uh, that's mostly just to highlight that you can actually do real-time stream processing just by using Azure Functions and Azure Web Jobs, although there's a lot of extra work to get um, all the benefits from the platform uh, of Azure Stream Analytics. All right, so let's have a look at Azure Stream Analytics. That's why we're here. So this is an overly simplified chart or diagram um, just to show you uh, the general structure of Azure Stream Analytics. And we will later go into Azure as well to see how this looks uh, in the platform. But in general, as we talked about earlier, you can have one or more inputs. Um, and these inputs, they can be both moving data streams, but it can also be reference data streams. And reference data streams is something that is a really interesting concept. Um, that it's data that is slow moving or never changing. So take the example uh, about uh, toll roads, for example. Uh, you may have um, a mechanism application that uh, uh, takes a photo of your license plate and then parses that out to get the uh, plate number uh, in order for um, the application to send a, a bill or charge your account uh, for the amount you've used that day. Um, the plate information of your car may not be enough to find the address uh, and the account uh, of the car holder. So you may have to join that data uh, with a reference data to get the VIN number and the address uh, of the car owner. So that's a good use case for reference data. Uh, once the query uh, is being performed here uh, in the center of this diagram, we can then output the result in multiple ways. Uh, and this is a really, really cool part of Azure Stream Analytics, uh, a way that you see uh, it integrate with other uh, cloud services in Azure. Um, the arrow that is pointing down is a functions arrow. So functions uh, can be done in two different ways in Azure Stream Analytics. As I previously mentioned, you can write your own JavaScript functions um, that can do uh, data parsing and all kinds of cool stuff. But one of the really interesting things with Azure Stream Analytics is its ability to uh, call machine learning functions in Azure uh, that can be predefined and trained and ready to go. Um, so for example, you can uh, make your own semantic analysis uh, machine learning endpoints and you can call them from Azure Stream Analytics uh, to get the result. A few other things that I want to point out uh, is that uh, Azure Stream Analytics and any stream processing technology in general relies heavily on the concept of temporal windows. So temporal windows, uh, we'll dive into that in a bit later, but in general, that's a way to group data uh, points uh, in a window of time. Other things that are really cool is uh, the event of order policies. Uh, this is a way to be able to handle uh, events that uh, obviously are not in order. Um, it may sound trivial, but if you think about it a bit, uh, if you're streaming data from a mobile phone, uh, you may have uh, uh, Wi-Fi dead zones in your home, uh, you may go in a tunnel, there may be other reasons for your internet connectivity to go down. Uh, with, uh, when that happens, your events uh, that are streamed from your phone will get out of order or they will be delayed. So the event out of order policy allows you to define if uh, they should be neglected when they come late or if, we buffered, or if we should buffer the stream and allow them to be included as well. Um, finally here, coming from a medical device and pharma industry, which is highly regulated, 
I, I'm happy to see that Azure Stream Analytics is also HIPAA compliant out of the box, uh, which is a fantastic thing for anyone working with sensitive data. Let's uh, have a look at ingress. What kind of ingress or inputs can we have for an Azure Stream Analytics job? Well, the most common one is uh, the Vent Hub and IoT Hub. Uh, those are uh, fully scalable solutions in Azure that can be used as an ingestion point for, uh, for any types of devices. IoT Hub is obviously uh, more used in uh, IoT situations where you have uh, uh, mobile devices or a Raspberry Pi or something else that pushes data to the cloud to be consumed. The benefit of an IoT Hub, for those um, not familiar with the concept, is that you can have a, a multi-direction communication, meaning that you can, uh, the IoT Hub in itself can call the devices to, for example, decrease the frequency uh, of events. Uh, which can be very useful if you are tracking a storm, uh, wind strength, and uh, you don't want uh, second um, uh, frequency of seconds of updates of the wind strengths uh, when it's calm, but when the storm approaches, you may want to increase that frequency. Blob storage is an interesting uh, ingress here, at least for me when I started looking at this from the beginning. Blob storage uh, uh, obviously is, is not a moving data stream by any means, but this is the way you, uh, you do reference stream. So uh, for example, you can um, deploy a, a JSON file in your blob storage in one of your containers, and you can reference this one uh, to join on it for, uh, for uh, tile information or bin numbers or any other kind of reference information. So egress. There are tons of egress points in Azure Stream Analytics, uh, and this is where things get really interesting. Um, I generally, when I do this slide, I have a, a kind of a Jeopardy quiz uh, to can figure out what the, all these Azure symbols uh, mean. Um, but moving from the top, top left here down to the bottom, we can see that we can output our analytical result to both the Power BI dashboard, uh, which we'll see later today. Uh, Azure functions can be triggered to send emails or do phone calls through Trello. Cosmos DB is a fantastic way to dump your data for a later batch analysis. Blob storage as well. Um, you can call another event hub if you want to do further downstream processing. Uh, obviously, SQL service is supported. Um, Azure table storage um, is also one component. Uh, and then the, the top right, I'm oh, sorry, bottom right uh, symbol indicates a service bus uh, relay that you can also use. Um, and for those, who are very interested in big data uh, or just dumping large portions of unstructured data, uh, we can also output uh, this analytical result into um, an Azure data lake, which can be super useful uh, if we just want to ingress a lot of data quickly and then do uh, further downstream cleaning or, or processing of some sort. And to sum this up, uh, for those uh, egress, ingress, and uh, um, analytical query, we have this uh, uh, diagram uh, that is taken from the Microsoft documentation uh, that kind of shows uh, stream analytics in its ecosystem here. All right, so let's jump into some more technical concepts here. So temporal windows, that is something uh, that is in the core of uh, Azure Stream Analytics. And you can think about it a bit like, um, Let's say you ask a question about how, how many tweets uh, uh, about a certain subject have I seen in the last 10 seconds. So that question uh, kind of frames this discussion a bit because you want to know the tweet count within a given time frame. And this is where windowing comes in. And there are a few different ways you can do temporal windows. Uh, the first one is something called a tumbling window. A tumbling window as this diagram uh, aims to, to show, uh, is uh, equal length non-overlapping window. So what do I mean with that? Well, that means exactly what I said before, is that if you have a question about how many uh, tweets for certain subjects uh, has occurred in the last 10 seconds, uh, then you definitely want to use this kind of window because that will provide uh, discrete uh, windows in time where we'll sum up uh, those events for you. And you can see here in the first portion of this window, you have two events. 
uh, the middle tier tier, you have three, and then the final one, you have one single event that's going to be outputted. Um, and uh, below here is a brief uh, preview of the Azure Stream Analytics SQL syntax. Um, we used a group by keyword to group by a temporal window. And it's very straightforward. You group by timely window, you indicate if it's seconds, minutes, hours, or days, uh, and then you provide uh, the quality uh, of that unit. The following window I want to discuss is hopping window. Uh, as tumbly window, this is also an equal length window, but it's overlapping. So this has an added benefit that it, it will even out your uh, processing data because it's going to give you, in this case, the number of tweets per certain subject, the last 10 seconds, output it every five seconds. Uh, or in, in this query below, it's actually indicates minutes, but uh, you can see that as an example. So it will still summarize the, the tweets in 10 second intervals, but it will start a new window every five seconds again. And that's what's indicating with, uh, what we try to indicate with hopping window, so it hops. Um, and you below, you can see the syntax uh, for this kind of temple grouping as well. Um, also pretty straightforward, you define the duration of the window, and then you define how often do you want the window to hop. And in our case, every five seconds. The final window uh, that is slightly more advanced uh, is sliding window. Uh, it is uh, uh, also equal length, uh, but it's by no means, non, uh, by no means overlapping, uh, non-overlapping. And it is uh, very random. Um, and you may wonder when you want to use a sliding window. Um, and actually, it's really useful, especially if you do some kind of analytics where you are trying to track a peak of some sort, and you want really high resolution for that peak. You don't really care about the baseline where nothing happens. In that case, sliding window is fantastic, because you can define uh, and say that, hey, give me the aggregate of this query uh, in 10 second intervals, but uh, don't really worry about doing anything if you haven't uh, uh, met this condition. So for example, uh, don't even start counting tweets um, or the tweet count or sentiment score if we don't tweet about a certain subject. So um, more specific use cases for this one, uh, but very useful in many scenarios. All right, so we've gone through temple windows. And I want to give a brief deep dive into uh, the temporal SQL or uh, Azure Stream Analytics SQL to quickly just provide um, you all with a context on how it looks, uh, how you can use it, uh, different scenarios of usage, uh, and just to kind of let you know that this is very similar, similar, similar to um, the normal uh, SQL that you see on your everyday work. The general structure of one of these statements is as below. Um, as you can see directly, it's very familiar to anyone who has any database experience. It's a normal select statement. Uh, in this case, we select everything. And we select from an input instead of selecting from a table. And one of the things that is different from a normal query is that we select into something. We select into an output. And as we saw in the previous slides, this can be Power BI, uh, it can be uh, Azure Functions or anything alike. Um, and uh, what is also really important is that you want to uh, normally group by a temporal window. But I wanted to just point out that the grouping by temporal window is not required uh, if you don't do any aggregate functions of some sort. Uh, but in most use cases, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, very useful and uh, most likely needed. Azure, uh, Azure Functions, uh, sorry, Azure Stream Analytics has a lot of built-in functions that you can utilize uh, um, when needed. Uh, I just uh, tried to kind of uh, show them to you here, but I'm not going to go too much into the details. Uh, but just to point out a few that I think are really cool, uh, lag is one of them. Uh, it allows you to uh, compare the event you're currently uh, processing with the previous event uh, in the same time frame. Uh, it's very useful to detect change, for example. 
And uh, anomaly detection is one of those built-in machine learning functions out of the box uh, from, from Azure Stream Analytics. It allows you to, uh, uh, with easy syntax, uh, do both uh, uh, positive and negative uh, comparison to see if you have a long-term or short-term trend uh, in your uh, streaming. Um, other fun things as well is uh, being able to easily process uh, JSON structures. Uh, so note that the events in general are in JSON format. Uh, you can get array uh, element. Um, so for example, if you have a, a JSON uh, structure that contains an array, uh, you can very easily, uh, using this syntax, get the fifth or sixth uh, element in that array, which for example could be a, a sensor from a specific room. Um, all right, so this is a query that we will look at in our demo as well later. Um, I wanted to show this query to you just to give you an understanding of how many normal SQL keywords that we can use in an Azure Stream Analytics query. You can see here that we can use the average um, keyword to, in our case, get the average sentiment score over a period of time. We can use the min keyword get the minimum sentiment score, and we can use the max keyword to get the max. Uh, and we can also just use count uh, as always. So a lot of things that we will see with Azure Stream Analytics is not foreign to us. Uh, we have the power of SQL with added power of Azure Stream Analytics. Joining on streams is another really interesting thing that you can do in Azure Stream Analytics. Um, in this case, uh, I'm trying to demonstrate how you can join on a reference stream. This is an example that uh, we actually have on Excel's GitHub, uh, GitHub page as well. Uh, it's a repo that shows you how you can stream data from a uh, Raspberry Pi, sensor data. And in order to get the name of the Raspberry Pi that we're streaming from, we can join on a JSON uh, uh, text file to get the friendly name uh, of that device. Um, this can be very useful if you are displaying multiple devices in a Power BI dashboard and you want to see uh, is the temperature reading coming from uh, John's device or, or Janet's device. So I briefly mentioned lag as well. Lag is one of those uh, cool functions to detect change. And if you go into the Excel Lab GitHub page repo, uh, you will see a great example of this where we're trying to uh, implement uh, our own burglar alarm in, in some sense. Um, what lag is doing right here is, is taking the distance measured from a uh, motion detector uh, and comparing it uh, with the previous reading within a time second, a 10 second time frame to see if uh, something has moved closer to the motion detector or not. Um, so it's a really easy way to detect change in a moving data stream. And I'll be providing the, the URL uh, and the name to this repo uh, in the end of this uh, webinar. So I definitely recommend you all to take a look because there's a lot of great examples in there. And uh, just to briefly touch on this, uh, not to go into depth too much, uh, events in general, especially in Azure Stream Analytics, um, come in, in a JSON format. Um, this is by no means a great example of uh, sensor data. But as you can see here, uh, we may get uh, an object with an ID and then have an array of sensors. Uh, for example, they can be uh, different sensors or they can be the same sensor in different rooms. If we would like to get the first sensor reading uh, out of this JSON array, it's really easy to do so. We just pass in, um, just pass in the, the input uh, into the get array element uh, method and we can pass in the, the index of that sensor we want to get out, and suddenly we have first element here that we can do uh, additional processing with. Um, normally, this can be done by using the with keyboard, keyboard uh, and you can do your subqueries like that and uh, keep uh, doing uh, analytical processing on uh, these array elements. So it's very cool to see how uh, Azure Stream Analytics makes working with complex structure very, very easy. All right, so before we head into the demo, I wanted to briefly touch on performance and scaling. As of recording of this uh, webinar, 
um, we, uh, a streaming unit is one megabit per second. And a streaming unit is, uh, uh, is the way we, uh, is the way Azure Stream Analytics uh, will charge you. Um, you can have uh, up to 120 streaming units per subscription, and uh, they currently cost about $11 an hour per streaming unit. Um, so if you have a simple uh, query, a simple job, uh, you may just need one or two uh, streaming units, and you then may be able to scale up from there to allow a great performance for your application. Azure really makes it easy for you to see how much of your streaming units you're currently using, uh, so you know way in advance uh, when it's time to scale out. Performance is something that is always important when working with an application. And it's something that uh, you should think about early uh, to make sure you get that real-time um, insight that you're looking for. You can paralyze a lot of your queries by using the partition by keyword. Um, and if you're familiar with this, uh, you may know that uh, the event tabs that we're using as Ingress or the IT hubs, they themselves can be partitioned into 32 partitions, which are 32 uh, separate uh, readers of events, more or less. In the same way, you can partition your uh, Azure Stream Analytics job into partitions to perform independent executions of queries by themselves. Uh, of course, this uh, puts some uh, responsibility on you to make sure that your queries uh, are independently uh, executable, uh, so they can run in parallel. Uh, not all jobs can be done, uh, can be run in parallel. But if you can, uh, I definitely recommend you to, to look into this. All right, so we're gonna look into a demo uh, in Azure Stream uh, Analytics in the portal. Um, and just as a reference, uh, the resources uh, for this webinar can be found here. I highly recommend uh, Stream Analytics with the uh, Microsoft Azure book that you can uh, purchase and uh, uh, we also have, as I mentioned earlier, uh, open source repo on Excel's Excel Lab um, homepage. But let's look at the demo to start with. So uh, if we navigate to the repo, I may be able to, to show you here uh, what we're trying to achieve with this demo. So in this repo uh, that you may be able to use off this webinar, uh, we have two examples of uh, streaming real-time data. One of them is utilizing uh, a Raspberry Pi streaming sensor data, such as temperature, humidity, light, and sound, um, which we will not be demoing today, but feel free to try it yourself. Uh, and the other one that we'll look into today is uh, how we stream real-time tweets uh, on a specific subject or keyword. And as this graph is trying to demonstrate, um, uh, the whole infrastructure is built upon a stream analytics job in the middle that utilizes uh, an event hub as ingress. And uh, the event hub is getting its data through an Azure web job. And the reason why we have an Azure web job is because we need something, an intermediate here, that will produce the events. We can't automatically, uh, in the current state at least, uh, allow Twitter to push our events to the event tab. We need something in the middle that constantly uh, opens a real-time connection with API to get tweets for a specific keyword, and then pushes those to the event tab to be consumed by the streaming job. Once we do our query here uh, on the streaming job, uh, we will um, use, utilize collective services uh, in Azure to get a sentiment score on the tweet text. Um, to tell us if it's positive or if it's negative or if it's just neutral. We will then output this into Power BI dashboard to see real-time data. Uh, I think this is something that's really cool. I follow the Power BI journey uh, from the start and I've uh, been a big, uh, big fan uh, from the very beginning. And it's really cool to see how it so easily and seamlessly integrates with Stream Analytics to have real-time dashboards. This job will also uh, trigger Azure functions uh, that we may or may not uh, touch on today. Um, but these functions uh, can be utilized to send emails to, to key stakeholders, for example, about, uh, uh, about tweet data. So for example, envision that you are launch, launching a new product, or if you just want to monitor your, uh, 
your company's uh, appearance on, on social media, this is a great example of, uh, of uh, streaming real-time insights uh, in these areas. Um, just to know if uh, people are uh, positively talking about your company or if there's some concerns that you need to be aware of and address. So let's start having a look at uh, the, the Azure stream, uh, sorry, Azure web job actually, that is uh, uh, communicating with, uh, with the Twitter API. So this is a very simple application. Uh, you can find it uh, in the, the repo uh, online. It all starts uh, uh, just uh, utilizing, uh, well, it's just a console application in essence. Uh, what it does is that it uh, figures out all the configuration uh, information to be able to know which event hub we're going to push data to, as well as which uh, Twitter API uh, we should uh, be looking at uh, with the correct credentials. Once we have that set up, uh, we then start the streaming uh, client here, and we, uh, in our case, will define filters. So we will define which keywords we are interested in knowing more about. And in the example we'll see, uh, I will stream um, all the tweets uh, currently uh, online about Sweden. Uh, myself, I'm from Sweden, and uh, there's just been a parliamentary election, so it's very interesting to see and follow what people are saying uh, about the outcome. Once we, uh, we have a tweet, uh, we will call this with action on receive method, uh, which will log uh, tweet received. It will then, uh, through a, a wrapped uh, service here, uh, get the sentiment score of this tweet text through uh, calling the cognitive service in Azure. Um, so this is a really cool out-of-the-box uh, solution that you can utilize yourself and, and very easily set up. Once we get the sentiment score, we will then just push it to the event hub, and uh, that will ingest it further into the data pipeline. Um, so. Before we start this job and uh, start looking at uh, what it can do, let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at the Azure Stream Analytics uh, query. So Azure Stream Analytics uh, is uh, uh, has a really cool uh, icon. You can see it here, and if you go into it, you can see a few different sections that we already touched upon earlier in this webinar. We have the input section the output section, uh, and the query. Those are the most important sections uh, that uh, you need to know about when setting up one of these jobs. Before starting the, the demo, let's take a look at some of these, uh, um, these uh, domains uh, for you as well. In this demo today, we've already set up all of the necessary data and the inputs and outputs to make it efficient. Um, but you can see here that we have an input from uh, one of our events hub, event hubs uh, in Azure. Adding a new stream up input is really easy. What you do is just clicking on this uh, plus symbol right here. And as you can see, you have those three choices that we discussed earlier, event hub, IoT hub, and blob storage. If you'd like to choose an event hub, just click on this, select your name, and from there you can then go and decide uh, if you're using an existing one or if you're uh, um, creating a new one uh, as well. Uh, and Azure Stream Analytics takes care of most of the rest uh, from that point. As mentioned earlier, we can also use a reference input to, um, uh, to be used in the query. And we can only do blob storage. Blob storage, uh, if we do reference input, we just need to find the name here as well, uh, which blob storage we're going to. So you have, to have your storage account. Uh, you also need to find a pattern right here for a file you're looking for. So you may have placed your uh, uh, file in a specific container, which you choose here. Uh, and then you need to define what the name of the file is that you want to include as reference data. The output section uh, is a lot more verbose. Uh, in our case, we have a Power BI output. We have a couple of functions. Um, and uh, we also have uh, a Cosmos DB storage right here uh, that will be storing data for, for later use. As we saw in the presentation, there's tons of selection here that you can do. Um, and 
honestly, these options keep changing uh, as we go along. And I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if you have more than these options uh, once you view this webinar. So finally, the query is where all the magic happens. And we won't go into too much detail uh, on this query right now, but uh, you may be familiar with this section already uh, from the presentation. This is the query that uh, takes the input uh, from uh, our event type stream right here, and then does a lot of aggregations based on a hopping window uh, to, uh, to determine the average sentiment score, mean and max sentiment score, uh, for a last one minute uh, interval, and it will give us a new uh, data point every five seconds. Uh, but we also can easily do things such as this, uh, in which you uh, can just dump your data straight into the Cosmos DB uh, uh, container. Uh, in our case, we don't even group by a temple window, because we just want to dump every event we get in. Uh, we can also do really cool things like this uh, with an Azure function query. So what this Azure function is doing here is, is trying to uh, figure out any tweets that are below 0.2 in sentiment score, which is very negative. And if so, it will trigger this Azure function uh, with the following uh, data. So the out time, uh, sentiment score, and tweet text. And what the function will do uh, is to send an email to given stakeholders then. Uh, that something is wrong. Uh, and finally, this is just something I want to show you. I don't want to take too much time into this, but this is a great example of using anomaly detection out of the box here. Uh, just notice how, how easy and small this syntax is here. On a one line uh, change, you can include uh, doing anomaly detection on, a, uh, on an input of your choosing. Uh, to be able to, in our case, uh, detect any bi-level change. So if either if it's a positive trend or if it's a negative trend. Um, this is a really cool feature uh, that was just released this year. And um, anyone working with machine learning or, uh, or um, those kind of things should definitely have a look at this as it may uh, reduce some of your uh, custom um, endpoints you may have to create. All right, before we talk more about this, let's get this uh, job started. So something to note here is that uh, these queries, they can take uh, a little time of time to, uh, to start, um, up to a minute. So let's get it started so we can uh, uh, get some insights. And uh, while we wait for that, uh, we can also start our, uh, our web job. And I'll start it from uh, my local client here instead of starting it from the portal, uh, just because I want to show um, the console output uh, that we get here. Um, so if we go ahead and start this, we will see that we will get a little uh, console window here uh, showing you what's going on. And it's moving a little bit too fast maybe to get some value out of this. But you can see here that we are uh, creating the event tab, uh, we are getting tweets here, tweet received, and we're also getting uh, data straight from our Coinbase service. So some tweets have a 0 0.5, this is 0.67, this is 0 0.76. Uh, so the majority of them are either neutral or positive. Here's 1.85, so that's really positive. So what it's doing right now, it's, it's uh, uh, connected to the Twitter API, it is streaming data, uh, it's connecting to the cognitive service to get a sentiment score, and then it's pushing it to the event hub. So once we have uh, the Azure Stream Analytics job uh, up and running, we should be able to see uh, all of this data in a Power BI dashboard that we already created. So it's currently still starting. So uh, we can keep looking a bit at other fun functionalities uh, you have here in the portal. So I, I mentioned earlier that we can set the uh, event out of order policies. Uh, this can be done uh, right here. And you can decide if you want to accept late events. And you can decide uh, how um, late uh, or how long you will wait more or less for late events. In our case, we set it to five seconds, which means which also means that we buffer the stream with five seconds. Uh, so you will have a five seconds delay uh, in any uh, intelligent output. This is definitely up to you how long you want to set this to. If 
Five seconds is the default, uh, but it depends on how mission critical your uh, data pipeline is. Um, and this is also uh, a way to set how you handle out of order events. Uh, we currently adjust our query based on them, so we include them, but you can also decide just to drop them uh, and not even care about them at all. Um, and scale as well. Um, obviously, here is where you see uh, the scale. Um, so we're currently using one streaming unit out of 120, uh, but uh, you can just dry this up and you will rescale the job uh, to be even more powerful than it is today. Uh, one thing I really want to mention as well is that when we talk about performance uh, and uh, use, uh, doing uh, parallelized uh, queries, you can only decide how many uh, partitions you want your job to have when you create your job. So uh, if you decide, and I think this one is only two partitions, so you can do it two in parallel, uh, you can't change that once the job is created. You can only do it in the beginning. This is not a big thing because it's pretty easy to create a new job, especially if you automate it with uh, ARM templates. But I want you to be aware of it so you can plan ahead and make sure uh, this is properly set up. All right, so this job is now running. And you can see that uh, we have our latest output is uh, 124943, uh, so just uh, recently. And uh, it's going to out, uh, give you a new one here all the time when, uh, when things are getting pushed. So let's move to the uh, Power BI dashboard that uh, has been created previously. Uh, so this is a, a live data stream of, uh, of the tweets uh, currently in progress about Sweden. Um, it's very easy to set up this dashboard, uh, but what you're currently looking at right now is a graph here showing you uh, the maximum uh, score uh, for the last minute uh, when this event was received, the minimum score over that time frame, as well as the average score in that time frame. And up here, you will see, um, I believe, the average score currently uh, being processed. Uh, down here, you will see the tweet frequency. So currently, uh, the last minute, we had 17 people in the world tweeting about Sweden or had anything about Sweden in their tweets. Uh, and this is actually a pretty uh, interesting thing is that it's pretty uh, stable on 18 tweets or 20 tweets per second. It rarely goes above 30. Uh, but it rarely goes below 50 in either. So you get kind of some fun insights here uh, if data is something that you're interested in. Uh, but you can see here how we get uh, real-time insights here in a Power BI dashboard, and uh, it gets updated every five seconds based on that hopping window we defined earlier in that query. So that's really some really cool stuff. And just to give you some uh, pointers here on how to create one of these dashboards, um, if you want to do so, um, if you don't have any previous experience with Power BI, I recommend you do a few tutorials, and I think you'll get up to speed really quickly. Uh, but firstly, of course, you need to create a dashboard. But once you create the dashboard, all you need to do is just adding a tile here. And in the bottom right corner, you just choose custom streaming data as your source. And you can then decide which of your two streaming data sets, uh, or which streaming data sets in general, you want to utilize for your data uh, ingress. Uh, in our case, we want to do the Twitter stream, which is currently happening. You can then decide what kind of tile you want. So do you want a card, which this is, or do you want some kind of line graph, which this is. So if you just go with a card to be, uh, make it simple, you can then add a value. And right here, you will see uh, all of those uh, various values that we're outputting for each event. Uh, just to kind of recap on this, you see here that we output average sentiment score, min, max, and tweet per minute. That's exactly the same thing as you will see here. So average, min, max, tweet per minute. Uh, and you can choose one of these uh, as your indicator. So just going max here, uh, do next. You can choose a name, so we'll skip that for now. You see here that we have created, uh, created one of these tiles here. Uh, and if we apply some rounding, we'll see the same value as we see here. Um, so very quickly, we can get something up and running, uh, and you can have this as your uh, overall monitoring dashboard or anything else. So once again, this is a small demo of uh, Azure Stream Analytics in practice. If you are interested in pursuing more information about this or testing out for yourself, I highly recommend that you go and uh, check out this re repo uh, on the Excel Labs um, uh, page. 
Um, the query uh, will be in, uh, sorry, the URL will be in this webinar and it can be found right here. And uh, we have some really cool examples, especially using ARM peppers as well, where we can get most of this infrastructure in Azure up and running with just one click instead of uh, manually having to uh, provision your own uh, cloud services. So just to summarize, uh, in this webinar, we have introduced you all to the concept of Azure Stream Analytics. We have walked you through the ecosystem and its dependent components. Uh, we have talked briefly about temporal windows and its use cases, uh, as well as had a deeper look into the Azure Stream Analytics query syntax, uh, which for many will be familiar if you have a database background. We have uh, also uh, looked into a live demo of streaming Twitter data and doing semantic analysis. Um, so at this point, I thank you all for joining and listening to this webinar. And I hope you uh, learn some new things and uh, continue to explore uh, and stay curious in this space. Thank you very much.